In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to change oil on a vehicle. I'll go through some of the items behind me, explaining to you how they're used in the oil changing process. I'll give you some ideas on cost, how to stay safe, and how to operate these items to do an oil change. The vehicle behind me is a Mazda 6. This video isn't specifically how to change oil on a Mazda 6. It's to give you some advice on how to change oil if you're just starting out. Or if you need some examples or better ideas on how to change your own oil. We'll first start with some of the safety items. This vehicle that I'm going to be using, I'm going to need to get the vehicle up off the ground a ways so that I can get to the oil filter and the oil pan bowl. The way that I'm going to do it is by a ramp like this. This ramp was made. It's made out of wood. You can go to any auto parts store or Amazon and buy ramps. And I recommend ramps over a jack. Uh, you're going to be putting your whole body up there. Uh, don't take the chance on you know, the vehicle falling or rolling backwards. The other item to stop a vehicle from rolling backwards is to make sure that you have some type of block behind the rear wheel so that vehicle doesn't roll back and crush you when you're underneath. Items like gloves and rags are important and obviously a dirty set of clothes, I'm not in them right now. The next items to talk about are the oil, the oil filter, and an optional crush washer. The crush washer is used so that you don't over tighten the bolt on the oil pan and we're going to use that today. If you don't know what oil type your vehicle uses, the best place to look is in the owner's manual. And if you don't have an owner's manual, you can go online and look up your vehicle with the year, make, and model. The next item you need is an oil filter wrench. There's many different types out there. This one just happens to be one that when you're removing the oil filter, it will tighten down on it and help you remove it. However, it won't allow you to tighten an oil filter when you're putting it on. You'll need a good set of sockets. English and metric is what I recommend. It all depends on the side of your oil pan bowl. You'll need a good way to collect the oil in an oil pan and a funnel to add oil. And I also recommend just an old piece of cardboard under the oil pan just in case there's a mess or some splash from the oil coming out of it, um, oil pan. And then last but not least is a empty jug. You want to recycle all of your oil and, and fortunately for my area, if I label old oil, they will pick it up during trash day. Before I get started changing the oil on this vehicle, I wanted to provide a couple benefits. I've changed my own oil for over 25 years and I've found that I don't have to spend a lot of time doing it as I would have if I take it in and get a service. I could spend about 25 minutes from start to finish on an oil change here and I save some time in the process. Also the cost. The cost for a synthetic for oil and the oil filter and the crush washer runs me about $40 per vehicle, give or take, depending on you know how much I need and the quantity and the type of oil filter that I'm going to be using, it's in the range of about $40. So not only do I save time, but I also save some money in the process. With that said, let's get started to change the oil. Alright, the first step that I'm going to do is safely put the car up on ramps. The next step is to get the oil pan bowl out, and I'll do that right now. 
on this vehicle, I have an access panel that houses both the oil filter and the oil pan. I do have to uh, go ahead and use a socket to get out two bolts and then there's two plastic push pins in order to get the door off. And if you can see back up in there, there's the oil pan bolt and the oil filter right next to it. And this is really convenient because they're both in the same area. I can do this a lot quicker uh, by removing the, the oil pan bolt drain the oil, and then the oil filter. Um, some vehicles don't have this option, so this is engineered real nice. A word of caution, uh, make sure that your engine is not hot. Uh, engine oil does heat up and you don't want to burn yourself. It doesn't take much to untighten these. Uh, they shouldn't be tightened very hard. And this is where it kind of gets messy and you'll need a, obviously your gloves and your rags. But before I do that, I'm going to go and uh, remove the filter first. You should let the oil drain out of the oil pan uh, for at least a good 5-10 minutes or when it just starts to drip very slowly. let that drain for a little bit longer and what I want to show you here is that some of these pan bolts have that crush washer on them and so if you can see that right there it's hard to get off because it has a little layer of film in there um, that kind of sucks that washer on but you want to make sure that you get that washer off and not reuse it some people do reuse them and I would say this would be okay in this instance but uh, just to show you how this works I'm going to uh, need to get a little knife in there to pull that off. I've heard stories where even the mechanics forget to take these off if you can see that right there and what happens you get two of them on there and then you don't get a good seal. And really the washer is not there for the seal, it's really there for you not uh, 
torquing it down too much. But you only you only want to have one on at a time. As we're waiting for the oil to drain, what you can do is you can go ahead and prep your oil filter. So usually they come with kind of a protective coating, plastic film, you need to pop that film off. Now the one that I have here from Mazda already has a little bit of grease or oil film. They actually, it looks like they used a grease on this one. But if it is a dry ring, what you want to do is dip your finger in that fresh oil from the fresh oil jug and put a coating of oil around that ring. You don't want to have that ring go on dry. Also, it's a good time to check out how much oil you actually need to put in. As I've mentioned from the video is take a look at your owner's manual. I've already have the page marked and for this instance with an oil filter because we changed the oil filter it's going to be 4.8 quarts and I've purchased a five quart jug so I have enough oil here to put into the vehicle hasn't slowed down all that much but it looks like I can put the oil filter on I want to make sure that I take off my glove which it has oil on it already I really don't need these gloves at this point anymore At this step what you don't want to do is you don't want to cross thread um, when you put this on you want to make sure that it screws on nice and easily there's no reason for it to go on hard at all and if you can see how easy it is for me to turn that that's already on and about right there is when I can feel it resist and that means that that uh, ring is pushed up against the seat of the oil filter housing and what I want to try to do here I only hand tighten mine and when I can't turn anymore is basically when I stop but um, I'll tighten it down this far, I'll put the plug back in, I'll get under there with my right hand, and uh, I'll see how much force I can put on there. So right now it's, it's good. I've made sure that I've put on my crush washer and now I'm ready to put this on. I'll wait here just a little bit. It's starting to slow down.
why we're waiting for it, you'll notice on the oil filler cap, it says the correct weight of oil, so OW20. So that's another check that you can do to find out you know, what weight of oil that you need. The other thing that you want to do is just to look at the cap. Make sure that there's no white film in that cap. It's just kind of a check I've done. Uh, one of the other cars that I had had an issue with a head gasket where the antifreeze got into the oil and it will foam up here in this cap. But you can check that and that looks really good. And then also, you know, just take a look, and it's hard to see because I don't have a light here. Um, take a look around, you know, the oil filler cap. Make sure you don't see any debris or, or wetness. And then it's also a good idea to just pull your dipstick too. This is the oil dipstick that you use to check your oil. Now we should be able to change, or sorry, we should be able to put the oil plug back in. Well, it's still going to drain here pretty good, but what I'll do is I'll end up grabbing the oil filter, cleaning that off, and uh, getting it ready for, to recycle. One thing that I like to do is put the, um, put the oil filter right in the rag that I used and then it doesn't make a mess spilling all over. The other item that uh, I'll point out is usually your oil filter box will specify how to tighten down your oil filter. And in this case it says tighten three quarters of a turn after gasket contacts base. Uh, they do have a torque spec as well, um, but uh, for oil filters, I usually never use a, a torque wrench on them. Okay, it looks like it has slowed way down. Now we're ready to put the bolt back in. It's always a good idea to slide the oil pan to the side. I've had some instances where I drop my socket inside the oil pan. And what you don't want to do here is to over tighten anything. That's why you have a crush washer and you just, just want to snug it up. You don't have to reef on it and put all your force into it. And that should be good. And again, like I mentioned, I want to make sure that I tighten down and make sure that this is the, the oil filter is tight here. You want to make sure that you wipe down anything because what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this cover off, I'm going to go for a drive, and then I'm going to make sure that there's no oil leaking around the bolt or the filter. Unfortunately, my memory card ran out of space and I wasn't able to show you when I was filling up the engine with oil. However, I did make a mark on my oil jug for approximately how much oil I needed to add. Uh, don't get too concerned about exactly where that mark is 
uh, what's going to dictate your uh, amount that you're going to need to put in will be from your dipstick. Your dipstick usually has a, a add and fill and in this case it has two dots and you want to have your oil level between these two dots. Of course you just don't want to overfill or underfill so that's why I'm going to take my vehicle for a drive. I know there's enough oil in here. Um, I'll bring it back to the garage, let it cool off for about 10-15 minutes, and then check the oil again. So in your owner's manual, you'll have a certain time period to change your oil. What I've done on all my cars for the last 25 years is to change the oil every 5,000 miles. I know there's some oils that can last longer than 5,000 miles along with oil filters. And then again, some manufacturers um, might say, you know, between 3,000 and 5,000. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, a little complicated to keep track of exactly when. And 5,000 is a really good mark in order to do that. So just some good advice um, if you want to take it. If not, if you want to follow the manual, that's great or the manufacturer of the oil or the oil filter as well. It's not so much the timing that is important, is making sure that you do change your oil at very specified intervals, you know, and not to wait uh, too long before that oil's changed. That oil, you know, starts to break down and will start to goo up, and uh, you don't want that to happen. If you did like this video and you appreciate uh, the information, uh, go ahead and click the bell like us, subscribe, and make some comments. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching.